So let's get to the next topic. Um, you may have seen that I switched something here. Um, it's better for me if I make this um, chapter after chapter and then change stuff which I think or I think the order is better another way live. So if this doesn't confuse it too much, I would rather continue it like this. Okay, because next thing I want to go talk about is exceptions. And Philip already explained to you um, the basics of exceptions. So um, imagine here we make a, a list in 50% of cases. So if this random dot one int is true and we know true is one, so if this here is one, then we make it a list. Otherwise we make it a one. And then if we try to access um, the first element of that, well, it only works in 50% of cases and in the other 50% we're gonna throw an exception. And in this case, it's a type error because the int object is not subscriptable. Okay, um, we can catch exceptions. In Java, you made this as try catch. In Python, it's a try accept block. So um, we put this into a try block. We try to access it here. And if this works, then we can continue printing everything back. And if there's an error occurring here, Python's going to jump from this line Y to this line where we catch this exception. And then it's print, uh, it's printing the type of the exception. So we can write, we can catch this exception S and then we can write a name for, so we can put this exception into a variable and can print, for example, the type of the variable and the error message of this. So here everything worked. And now we see we got an exception of type type error and the message of that the second thing we're printing is that int object is not subscriptable. Okay, so this is how we would catch exceptions here. Um, then there's also the finally block and the final block is really important when, for example, dealing with um, input output with opening files because the final block is executed no matter if you catch the exception. So if there is an exception, you go into the accept block or if you don't. And if you open files, you always need to close them. There's another way of doing so with context managers. We're going to get to that in a second. But if there's no context manager for stuff or just you do stuff like opening a file, then you should always close it in the finally branch. Because if you open too many files on your uh, machine, it's going to crash because there are going to be too many open file handles, so-called. Okay, so we can add a try and X, so we know already our try and accept block and we want to do have some behavior on a file not found ever, which is what's going to be raised by open if this file doesn't exist. Um, and then we can print stuff and we can also print the error message. But no matter if we get into the exception block or not, we want to close the file handle here. And that's really important, like I said, when doing IO, when working with the internet, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now we even see we have some error in the file handle because this file doesn't exist. Um, we could even nest this. So we could try file handle close and accept. We well, basically do nothing because if it exists, we want to close it. And if it doesn't, so this here um, happens when uh, this file doesn't exist. And like this, it's going to be signed again. Okay, but we still want to do this. We want to close the file in our finally block. Okay, so what's important to know about exceptions is that exceptions will go up through functions if they're unhandled. So if I have a function which throws an exception and this function doesn't catch this exception or only catches other exceptions, then the calling function is going to get the error. It's going to get the exception and it can itself then catch it. Okay, so what we're doing here, we cause an index error. We catch file not founds errors here, but we don't catch index errors here. So the caller of this function is also able to have this accept block here. And the caller of this function is able to have the accept block for here. So we're simply calling this. If we wouldn't have the try accept here, then um, we the errors, the exception would have been raised to where well, our main executing script executing stuff, which obviously doesn't catch stuff, so it's just going to tell us. But when we're calling the function, we can also catch the exceptions of this function. We can catch multiple exceptions in one try accept statement by simply repeating the line accept accept. Okay, so um, 
And then it's we'll start chronologically at the first one and checks if this fits. And exceptions in Python have an, a hierarchy. So all exceptions um, inherit from base exception. And then most of them except from inherit from exception. And then they are uh, special, more specialized and specialized. So one type of exception is the OS error and there's a file exists error or a permission error, for example. But it's going to take the first one that fits. So as exception is the mother of almost all exceptions here, um, we will run into this one, but not into this one. OK. You can also um, try, you can also use a try accept block with multiple uh, where we're catching exceptions of the same thing. So just catching exception that's generally never good style and you should never do this. You should know what kind of exceptions you're catching. So if we not know there would occur an attribute error and as, or an index error, we could catch them also like this. And now this is either attribute or index. Okay, so now we see that from base exception, not only exception inherits, but also keyboard interrupt. And keyboard interrupt is an exception. You probably had already um, some kind of infinity loop. So we could, for example, while true, uh, and then, oops, and then do nothing. This will run until I press control C. Oh, actually, in Jupyter, it's not Control C. Oh, God, what was Jupyter? I think it's AI for interrupt. Okay, and this will throw a keyboard interrupt. We can catch keyboard interrupts. So, what we can do is we can put this into a try accept block and then ex accept keyboard interrupt. We can print I gracefully stopped. And we can add behavior for graceful stopping. And now if I'm running this and I'm giving it the keyboard interrupt, it's going to gracefully stop. That's actually really nice. If you press Control C on normal terminals or II on um, Jupyter twice, twice it's just going to kill it. And you're not going to get the keyboard interrupt, but it's, Python's just going to kill it. So you have one chance for gracefully stopping. And if you're still taking too long and the user is impatient and press Control C a second time, there's no chance you're going to gracefully stop. But this is a really nice thing if, you're, if you want to be able to run longer scripts um, without um, the user interrupting them and, you lo and the user basically losing everything they did so far. Okay, and then there's also the try accept syntax also has an else defined, which runs as no if no error was thrown. So we have try, we have accept, we have finally, and we have else. Okay, and while the finally block runs every single time, the else block really wants if no error was thrown. So in this example here, we throw one of two random errors or we don't throw any um, error at all. So either we get an index error here, we're trying to access the third element doesn't exist, or we get a zero division error, or we simply get none. So, and all possibilities are there. Why do we need this else block? Um, it's not too important, but actually Python wants us to keep the try block as short as possible. Okay, so in your try block, you should have precisely that one statement that may throw the error. And everything which is supposed to work, which is supposed to run if this error doesn't occur, is supposed to be in the else block. And then everything that's supposed to run if the, if the exception, it's not always an error, it's an exception. You don't need to do this to only handle errors. Like exceptions are, there an exception exists and if you are programming you're dealing with exceptions as precisely this an exception this is an edge case which occurs but you have to handle these edge cases too it's not necessarily an error okay so if this exception occurs this is your behavior this is the behavior you're going to do and if the exception doesn't occur this is the behavior you're going to do but after the try accept else block um your behavior is going to is supposed to be consistent again so if the exception occurred then do this if the exception did not occur, this is, but afterwards you should be at the same stage so that you can continue your code after the block. So keep your try block as short as anyhow possible. And then everything which is supposed to be run if the try block finished successfully is supposed to be in the else block. 
it's not so also for example people discuss it here it's not too necessary but it's what you're supposed to do okay you can make your own exceptions to throw your own errors and actually that's well, not only errors let's make your own exceptions here um and that's actually really important and if you're doing stuff so we saw, we saw, for example, the keyboard interrupt is not really an error, but an exception. We also saw stop iteration. Stop iteration we saw here in the iterators somewhere. It's also something that's waste, but that's not an error. That's expected behavior. And also, oops, that's too far. And you're supposed to make your own exceptions for stuff. That's really useful for many situations and it just makes your program flow a lot better. And making custom exceptions is actually a perfect example of when you want to create a class that doesn't need to contain anything in it. So this is, if I create objects of this, I'm creating objects of type not the value I wanted exception, which are also objects of the type exception because I inherits from them. And this exception doesn't need additional behavior. And I just looked it up. So for example, one case when I did this, I made this timed input um, function and this basically is like a normal input. So we know a equals input prompt. Um, and then I can add stuff here. Uh, this is the same, but it uh, has a timeout. And if this timeout it reaches, it's just gonna replace um, the input I wanted with a standard value. And for example here, so if the timeout occurs, I raise a, a timeout expired. And this is an exception. So. In some cases, the timeout does expire. And if the timeout does actually exp expire, I want this, the behavior to occur. Okay, so this is an example of when you would, for example, want to waste your own exceptions. It definitely makes sense. So in the not the value I wanted example here, so this is for example, so obviously the not the value I wanted is not too useful because they're probably in the exception hierarchy, there's something better you can take. But um, this is how we would work with this. So um, this is the same as basically my example. Now you may remember the principle that Philip told, told you last week that in Python it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. This is because in Python it's so efficient to waste and to catch exceptions. As a matter of fact, it's more efficient to waste an exception uh, than for example to check if a key in a dictionary exists. This is why in Python, it's Pythonic to use many try accept statement statements instead of looking before you leap as it is the case in Java and C. So as a, a bit dumped down example that I actually use constantly. So imagine we have some list and we want to add the elements of our list to a dictionary and with the keys either even or odd. So if it's even, then we want to add it to the even key of the dictionary. And if it's odd, we add it to the odd key. So what I would do here is I would create an empty list and then I would append every element of the list to either even or odd depending on the result of this function. So either the, e key, the even key or the odd key. And if I only do it like this, well, first of all, the dict is empty. So what I would do here is I would try to append to that list and if that raises a key error, then I would simply create this list. And this is how this works. Okay, so it's not Pythonic to ask if um, this here, if this here is instance list, that's not Pythonic because this asking is instance list doesn't fit, with, fit the scheme. I'm going to explain that in duct typing in a second because it doesn't necessarily need to be a list. I can also append to other collections if I want, if I have the behavior in the collection I'm having, then it's fine of appending there. So in Python, you don't ask if this is a list because it doesn't need to be a list. It could also be some class you make yourself, which has the same behavior as a list, but additional behavior as well. And that is not necessarily an instance of the type list. So it's not a good style in Python to ask, is this a list? Yes, then I'm appending. No, then I'm creating a list. But we could ask, well, am I able to append to this thing? Yes. Then I do it, no, then please give me a key, then I create a new list. 